Hurry, the show is starting. again everybody and welcome to an all new episode of road trip after hours i'm your host mac davis along with my wwe hall of famer co-host mr teddy long hey teddy how you doing brother hey i'm doing good today man and first thing uh, before we kick off here I mean, let's wish everybody a late happy valentine's day yep. uh we couldn't do it on the 14th but we got, we got them right here today so uh everybody happy valentine's day and Hope all you ladies got a lot of flowers and not a lot of candy because that candy going to put some weight on you. So take the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be honest, Teddy, and I bet there's a lot of guys just like me. I went out uh, and got my wife her Valentine's, you know, card and some candy, stuff like that. I, I went out and did that last night. The, the night before Valentine's Day, I waited to the Y'all absolute last minute. And I do that every single year. And I know there's <laughs> probably plenty of men who are the same way. We just run out the last minute, go to the drugstore, go to the, the grocery store, wherever, grab a couple of things going, yeah, I've had this for weeks, baby. <laughs> yeah. <Hi. laughs> Look here, uh, Teddy, I know that uh, you're a football fan and the Super Bowl uh, just recently, of course, uh, was a big thing. And I, you know, I went out on Super Bowl day, and we had a, uh, a cookout with some friends. And I had a few adult beverages, you know, and I was feeling pretty good. Uh, I was also sick. I've been coming off of a cold. I wasn't bad sick at the, at the party. People don't freak out. I didn't have COVID. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I have been taking cold medicine, too. So I leave this party a little bit lit, and I get home, and I sit in my chair, I turn on the TV to watch the Super Bowl. Now, I realize I've had a few drinks, but I don't think I'm as bad as I'm about to be when I realize I hear SpongeBob and Patrick in the background during the football game. That's a very good point. All right, look, they're almost set for kickoff. I think there's really only one way to start this broadcast, start this game. Right? Thinking what I'm thinking, I'm thinking what you're thinking. I had to shake my head for a second and go, nah, I know I didn't hear that. So I sat back and I thought, well, maybe it's just a little promo they started the show with. And that's why I heard that. I sit back in my chair and I'm really getting comfortable. And I hear Patrick and SpongeBob still telling me what's happening on the field. That you always pick first on your team. Yeah, like that's the flounder. Exactly. <laughs> that's Christian McCaffrey. Here he is with the ball. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh and looks at the You mix that cough medicine uh, with that alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't do that. Okay, so that's a sign. That's telling you to leave the alcohol alone. But you know how many people I'm sure sat down because when I brought it up on my streaming service to watch the Super Bowl, that's the channel it sent me to. So but I'm thinking I'm it. watching the Super Bowl, and no, 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 <laughs> I'm actually watching Nickelodeon was carrying the football game with SpongeBob and Patrick. I was freaking out. I really thought I had lost it at that. Point. That's great. That's a oh, good one. God, uh, Teddy. Since the last time we talked, he's a victim. John Laurinaitis claims that he's a victim. He, he is. It's not just the girls now. John Laurinaitis is a victim because he, he's kind of claiming that Vince kind of made him do what he had to do as well. Your thoughts? Well, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just so sick of this. It's just a bunch of mess. You know what I mean? And it's just a bunch of mess that people got themselves in. And like I've always said, we talked about this before, you know, I don't, I'm not saying nothing about this. I don't know who's guilty and who's not guilty. And we won't know that until it's proven in a court of law. But I'm I'm saying this. I am a grown man, and there's nothing that another grown man can tell me to do. If I know it's wrong, and I know that it's going to get me in trouble, 
I don't give a damn who you are. You are not going to tell me to do something that I know is going to get myself in yep. trouble unless that I have in the back of my mind that, yeah, I'm going to do this. But whenever I do get in trouble, I'm going to tell everything. You know, okay. it, it, and that's what it sounds like, too. It sounds to me like John Laurinaitis, through his lawyer, kind of basically said, we're going to throw uh, Vince under the bus. And, yeah, it happened. But I'm a I'm a you know, I'm a victim as well. So he almost guaranteed the story that we heard that all that had happened. But he was a victim, too. So he threw Vince under the bus. So, you know, it's going to be Vince versus John Laurinaitis at some point in court. And it's going to get nasty. Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, I like I said, I I just feel bad. You know, maybe for Vince, I I I'm, I'm kind of like Bret Hart on this. It was just a surprise to me. Yeah. You know, I just you know Vince. You know, like I said, if he's done something, he's done something. I still have you know uh, much love and respect for him, but uh, that kind of hit me too because it was just out of the blue. But yeah, you know, uh, it and it when you think about it, Teddy, it's got to be hard for you because you know Vince in a different way. You know him in the professional manner of the professional wrestling business, the guy who brought you in and helped develop you into what you could be. He saw that in you. So that's what you base your your feelings of because that's the man you knew. When you're hearing all these stories, that's got to be hard to wrap your head around that when you see him in such a different light. Well, yeah, man. Uh, like I said, man, this this man gave me the opportunity of his lifetime, of my lifetime. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I this man put me on his private plane. I rode on that plane a couple of times. He picked me up in his in his own in the limousine that was picking him up. He had them to pick me up. So, uh, yeah, uh, he, he, he really made me, you know, feel comfortable and showed me that he appreciated my work and what I'd done. And like I said, you know, I was in my position there nine years running that show. And with Vin anybody knows Vince, Vince is strictly business. You don't stay in no position nine years unless you are are performing or you they're, they're getting something out of you. You're contributing yeah. something to that company. And for that man to put me there that long, that let me know I was doing my job. So for other people to, you know, want to play the race card with me and just because of the color of my skin, want to get rid of me. You know, because they, they have no I'm, and I remember one time I will, I'll tell you this and I won't call no name, but yeah. one of them walked up to me one day and he told me, he says, Teddy Long, you got the card blunt. But I always knew they didn't know I knew I always knew to just keep my mouth closed. So I looked at him and I said, what's the card blunt? <laughs> I know what the card yeah. blunt is. The card blunt means that you can't bother me. But yeah. I never let them know, because once you let let them know that you know what they're doing to you, that's it. Then you then you're really in trouble. Yep. So that's how I was able to survive this game. And I'm still in the game and I'm still, you know, as you know, doing what I do. And maybe I don't have a position today, maybe because I refuse to be a token. I don't know. No, I, I think that maybe, uh, you know, as the business business progresses that, uh, you know, and things change, so does the talent that you see on TV. I don't think it's anything to do with you, Teddy, because uh, I, you've proven yourself, brother. <laughs> you can go back to these specialty shows that they have once in a while. And when you hit that stage, the pop that comes out, one of the strongest ones of the night, the fans and, and, still, and, you know, take you. And that's what I say, man. I don't, you know, they, it don't bother me. You know, they never call me. It yeah. doesn't bother me at all, man. You know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, God has blessed me to make it where I am today. I'm surviving without the WWE, and I will continue to survive without them. I mean, they you, you can't rely on them to take care of you. You have to take care of your own life. But right. uh, they gave me a great life, you know what I mean? And they made a lot of things, you know, that are happening for me today. They made all that possible. Well, this made that possible. I won't yeah. say they. Yep. Okay, so I'm I'm because there were a lot of people that laughed that were in power that were laughing and talking to me that hated me also. So uh, I'll just say this, and 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 you'll see those of you who are watching why it's so difficult for Teddy to hear and 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 see the stories that come out concerning Vince because that's not the guy that he knew. Uh, the guy that he yeah. knew was different than that. So it's, it's like I say, I always try to figure out just through your eyes how tough that is to hear something about somebody you admire so much uh, because well, they can't you know be what? easy. And, and, and a lot of people don't know this, and I don't have no reason to lie about this. And if my wife was here today, she would witness to it. Vince McMahon called me on my birthday. That man is a billionaire. He ain't got time to sit down and call me. Yeah. 
Yep. Okay, so when I pick up my phone, this man calls me on my birthday. What are you doing? You know, me and him talking. And, you know what I'm saying? This yep. is something I know he didn't have to do. So yep. just think about that. Yep. All right, we got to take a quick break. And when we come back, we have a special Ask Teddy. We're only going to get to one question today, but that question is a little bit detailed, and you'll find out more when we come back. And, oh, by the way, Swifty Cam. You'll notice Swifty Cam taking place throughout the rest of the show where – uh, Taylor Swift will be around our show. You'll see what I mean coming up. And now, a historical moment in wrestling. I remember, I think, when I was a little boy watching Hulk Hogan cut down the cherry tree. No, seriously, it was like watching um, the story. Um, well, you know the deal, the thingy. And Well, anyhow, it was, oh, look, ice cream. <laughs> One look in her eyes and I'm mesmerized and hypnotized. She has class in the body. We're back with more Road Trip After Hours. I'm your host, Mac Davis, along with WWE's Hall of Famer, Mr. Teddy Long. And Teddy, it's time for Ask Teddy. be fun teddy there's only one question that we have and that one question is kind of detailed so we're going to go down bit by bit so i'm it's going to be a series of questions uh and you just see what your answers are but the email just by the way margie in cincinnati this is one of my favorite letters because there's a lot of good stuff in here so here we go all right teddy here's your first one who was your childhood celebrity crush he's going to say me I didn't have a childhood celebrity crush. You didn't have anybody grown up that you thought, oh, I'd like to get a hold of that when I get older. No, I I, no. I, I, I didn't grow up like that. No. Nah. <laughs> okay. I grew up in the hood, man. I ain't. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ripping and running up and down the street, stealing, yeah. you know, and doing every breaking the law, everything. So I, I don't. I didn't and have I'm sit, And I'm sitting there with Farrah Fawcett on my wall. <laughs> see what red, I'm saying? In a red bikini. I was like, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I, I ain't know nothing about none of that. All right, here's the next one. Person you would trade places with for a day. Who would you like to trade places with for just a day? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Probably uh, Jay-Z. Jay-Z, now why? Well, I mean, Jay-Z's got it all, okay? He's got it all, so why not have it all for one day? I was expecting Snoop Dogg. All right, let's see. Well, uh, you, I, you, I ain't got to trade with Snoop Dogg. I'm, I'm gonna be Snoop anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already Snoop already, so I ain't got to do that. Go Teddy. Go Mac. Well, here's here's the next question that's on the list: a guilty pleasure. <laughs> a guilty pleasure. Uh, probably to just uh, embrace Nia Jack. Yes, oh boy. Yes, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the big, it's a good one here. The big, let me see if I can get it out. The biggest risk you have ever took. Oh, man. God. Oh, I, 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 I'll tell you what it was. Uh, one time uh, it was me, Kevin Sullivan, and Kevin Sullivan's uh, kid, who his name was Ben. And uh, we were in uh, Amarillo, Texas. And so uh, in Amarillo, there's a thing called the Polydor Canyon. And so we got ready to go. I wanted to see the Kevin wanted to show me the Polydor Canyon. So we in the hotel. So we get, leave out the hotel. And I remember as we, as, as before we left the hotel, uh, I swallowed about five or six Valium, I think I had. I don't oh, know. But God. anyway, <laughs> three or four, I don't know. But anyway, I've, I've swallowed these. So. I'm on my way. We're on our way to the Polydor Canyon there. And so when we get there, you know, this big mountain and stuff. So me and Ben, Kevin's son, we start to, you know, climbing it a little bit. 
So we went up a little bit, so we look back, and so we see we're getting kind of, you know, up there, so we turn around to go back, going to get down. So as we're coming down, Kevin's little son says, hey, Teddy, I left my watch up there on one of the rocks or something. So I'm like, okay, don't worry about it, Ben. I got it. I'll go back up and find it. <laughs> so I start back to climbing up the rock, okay? So finally, I get back up there, and I see the when I get back up, I turn around and I see the watch, but the watch is on another rock. Uh -oh. Well, I'm so full of these values now. They really kicked in now. Till I'm, all just, I'm all just, I'm just all messed, bumbling, messed up now till I say to myself, you can jump from this rock to that rock and you can get that watch. <laughs> you thought That's you were Spider-Man all of a sudden. <laughs> and I, I, I jumped off of that rock and brother, the next thing I know, I'm coming straight down just like that. And I'm holding myself and I'm coming down like a fly. The rocks are behind me and everything. It's a true story. Kevin Sullivan will tell you that story. Oh my God. We, I'm surprised we didn't talk about that when we had him on the air about a month or so ago. Oh, oh man! And you know, and 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 you know what? I I I've scraped all the skin off of my elbows, my arms. All the skin is gone. So we That's go karma. back to the hotel. We go back to the hotel. I'm so full of Valium till they buy this bottle of alcohol and they take it, rub it on all that raw meat. I ain't burning or nothing. I'm just I'm so out of it. And they wrap both my arms <laughs> up in tape. I put my suit on and I go straight to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear god oh my god i love this show <laughs> okay let's see uh here's the next one the best compliment you have ever received uh was from vince mcmahon yeah i knew that would be the one and uh let's see your next one here is the worst piece of advice you have ever got <laughs> That was probably way back in the day, probably from some of the guys that just didn't know I didn't know any better. And they just told me, oh, I know. Let's see the worst advice. Oh, I know what it was now. I remember this one time, and I think Bruce Pritchard was ribbing me too, because he's, he's, he, he says to me, but, but you know, you have to be ready for this too. Oh, yeah. the, the guys are ribbing. And he says, I think Jerry Briscoe is a, uh, part Indian or something like that. Yes, yes. But anyway, Bruce comes to me and he says something to me about go up and make fun of Jerry or say something to Jerry, you know, about something. I don't know what it was, but Bruce tells me to do that. And so I got to but you know, a lot of guys, they'll go up and do stuff or Bruce is the kind of the boss there, you know, and I'm yeah. like, Bruce, I'm not doing that. You know better than that, man. And he's and finally, he's still, I, I was smart to it, so he started laughing. So I would think that was the <laughs> worst advice I could ever get from Bruce telling me to go mess with Jerry Briscoe, as dangerous as Jerry Briscoe is. <laughs> Jerry would have hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got two more for you before we get out of here. Something you wish you were better at? Uh, God, I don't really know. You know, uh, I you know lived a great life. I mean, I, I just don't know. I'm anything that I put myself to do. I mean, I do it, I, and I give it one hundred percent. So I, I don't know. I, I think I would have to be the person to ask me that question, you know, because I'm I'm most critical of myself than anybody. But see, I, I'm I one just, of those that uh, you know I would love to be better at singing or playing an instrument, yeah. something like that. Because you know, I've always like, man, I hear people singing. I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. You know, it's just one of those things, but I know I can't, so I don't attempt it. So, <laughs> well, my thing is, you know, I've learned that my gift is uh, talking. Yes. You know what I mean? And uh, so, and I'm, and I'm still able to do that, and I do it very well. So, I that that's something I don't understand either. Yeah, <laughs> you know I, I got mean? grandbabies but, that all the time they'll come around, they'll try to choke me or something like that. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's that's how Papa makes money. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here. I I can still talk. I I still look great. Teddy says. He's your baby's daddy. All right, here's your <laughs> here's your last one. This will be fun. Now think about this, Teddy. Who would you like to be stranded with on a desert island? Nia Jack. Well, you, that was quick. That was <laughs> fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Uh, we're out of time. We went we we pretty good here. And I, how did I not know Nia Jax would come out of your mouth? So <laughs> we've got to get her on the show sooner or later, Teddy. I want to work that somehow because we've got to have her on. You, um, you know what? I, you know, I've already put this in my head too, and I'm gonna tell everybody. I, I shouldn't tell it. I was gonna wait and, and save it, but 
<laughs> if I get a chance to go back on TV or they call me or something and I get and she's there, I'm going to propose to her and I'm going to I'm going to have somebody film and I'm going to tell her, Naya, I don't have the money right now to get the ring, but here's my WWE Hall of Fame ring. I'm going to give you this right here. <laughs> and you that wear this. Would be and great. Oh, that yeah. would be great. Yeah, I man. thought about, that's what I thought about doing. Naya. Uh, just being laying all jokes aside, she's a sweetheart, man. Very yes, nice yes. girl, man. You know, and, and I'm just having fun teasing with her. I'm sure she's got a boyfriend or husband or whatever, but Naya he doesn't want anybody coming after him with a gun. He's just kidding. Yeah. So. No, well, like I said, and Naya is just a sweetheart, and she's she always been so nice to me, and we always have a chance to talk when I see her, man. I love her to death, man. So Yeah, I, I love her attitude. I, I, You know, I've met her once before. She was the sweet, like you say, as sweet as she can be, uh, yes. and, and a beautiful woman. Oh, my God, just absolutely stunning uh, when you see yeah. her. She, you just can't help but look at her. Just, All right. That's what I'm talking about. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been Road Trip After Hours. I'm your host, Mac Davis, along with my WWE Hall of Famer co-host, Mr. Teddy Long, and we'll see you again next week. Hall of Play. <laughs>